Hello. In this video, we are going to solve a problem involving kinetics and first order reactions. We assume that we have a container that contains two substances, A and B. Both A and B decompose by first order kinetics. Next, we are told that the half-life for the decomposition of A is 50.0 minutes. The half-life for the decomposition of B, the half of B, is 18.0 minutes. At the initial time, T0, we are told that the concentration of A is exactly equal to the concentration of B. So, for this particular problem, we want to find T, the time, such that the concentration of A is four times the concentration of B. So this is what we have to find. For our first step, let us convert the half-lives from units of minutes to units of seconds, which are the standard units for the first order rate constant is inverse seconds. So 50 minutes works out to be 3,000 seconds, and 18 minutes is 1,000 and 80 seconds. Now that we have these particular values, we can actually determine the first order rate constants for A and for B. Recall that the rate constant, first order, is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the half-life. So if we're finding the first order rate constant for A, we have 0.693 divided by the half-life of A. So we have, in this case, 0.693 divided by the half-life of A, which is 3,000 seconds. Computing, we get that this value is 2.31 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. And reminder that the inverse seconds is the units of the first order rate constant. Next, we compute the first order rate constant case of B for B, which as recall is 0.693 divided by the half-life of decomposition of B. So we have 0.693 divided by 1,080 seconds and this gives us the first order rate constant of 6.4167 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. So now we have the appropriate first order rate constants for A and for B. And we notice that they have the proper units. For a first order reaction, we can find the amount of the material still remaining after time t, this is our concentration A sub t, is equal to minus the first order rate constant k times the elapsed time plus the natural log of this A sub zero, which is the concentration of A at the initial time t sub zero. So this expression is generally true for any substance a that undergoes a first order reaction. Since this expression is true generally for any substance that undergoes a first order reaction, it must be true specifically for A and for B in our present problem. So for the substance A, we know the natural log of the concentration of A at time t is equal to minus K, and we'll put some A just to emphasize that 
This is the first order rate constant k sub a that we have worked out. Time t plus the natural log of the initial concentration of a, which is a sub zero. It's also true for substance b. So the natural log of the concentration of b at some times t is equal to minus k sub b, where this is the first order rate constant that applies to the decomposition of b times the time t, plus the natural log of the concentration of substance b initially. There are two other important relationships that we need to solve this particular problem. The first relationship is that we're told that the initial concentrations of A and B are exactly equal. So this is it. Time T sub zero, the concentration of A and the concentration of B are identical. We're also told at some future time T that the concentration of A sub T, so this is the concentration of A at some time T, is four times as large as the concentration of B at that same time. So the way we write this algebraically is that A sub T is equal to four times B sub T. And this is at some time T in the future. Notice here that we have a system of two equations and we're going to simplify and solve this system of equation by substituting our initial conditions into the equations. So let's do that first for the first equation. And since we know that at time t, the concentration a sub t is actually four times as large as the concentration of b at the same time. So we can actually replace a sub t by four times b sub t in the first equation. So we get natural log of four times b sub t is equal to minus k sub a times t. And then we also use the fact that a sub zero is exactly equal to b sub zero. So we can actually replace a sub zero by b sub zero in the first equation. In our system of two equations, we can simply write down the second equation without making any changes. So let's keep this as natural log of the concentration of b times t is equal to minus k sub b times t plus the natural log of b sub zero. Now we are going to rewrite the same set of equations, but now so that we have the natural log of b sub zero alone on the right hand side. So we can do that with the first equation by adding um, k sub a times t to each side. So that gives natural log 4 times b sub t plus k sub a times t is equal to the natural log of b sub 0. Similarly, we can do the same trick with the second equation, but now we're going to add k sub b times t to each side. And that gives that the natural log of b sub t plus k sub b t is equal to the natural log of b sub zero. And now we have a transform set of our system of equations. We notice that the left-hand side of the first equation is equal to the natural log of the concentration of b sub zero. And the left-hand side of the second equation is equal to the natural log of the concentration of b sub zero. Therefore, by transitivity, that means that the left-hand side of the first equation must be equal to the left-hand side of the second equation. So we can combine these into one single equation. Next, 
we can simplify slightly by using the properties of the natural logarithm that the natural log of a product is equal to the sum of the natural logs. So the natural log of four times the concentration of B sub T is equal to the natural log of four plus the natural log of the concentration of B sub T plus K sub A T is equal to the natural log of the concentration of B sub T plus K B T. This is helpful immediately because we notice that we have the natural log of the concentration of B sub T on each side, which we can subtract out. And that simplifies our equation to the natural log of 4 plus K sub A T is equal to K sub B T. We can subtract k sub a t from each side, and that gives us that the natural log of 4 is equal to k sub b times t minus k sub a times t, which we notice we can immediately factor out the t to get that this is k sub b minus k sub a times t. Similarly, we notice that the natural log of 4 we can compute using our calculator. And this has the value of 1.386 k sub b minus k sub a times t. We have already computed k sub b and k sub a, so taking their difference is straightforward, and we can substitute that value into our equation. 4.1067 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds times t. So now we can divide each side by 4.1067 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. And we get that t is equal to 6 divided by And since we have 1 over inverse seconds, that gives us units of time of seconds. So this ends up being 1,300 and 74.97 seconds. And converting this to minutes, this gives us 56.3 minutes. So this tells us that starting with initial concentrations of A and B, after a little more than 56 minutes, the concentration of A will be exactly four times the concentration of B. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.